Welcome fellow isolators and uh, let's take a look at our showroom, a showroom taking shape. It's currently a working project but you can see all the bikes here on our website. I like to say there's some method in our madness but basically these are all a lot of very cool bikes and all the bikes that I wanted as a kid but I had a pooch maxi when all my friends had FS1E, they're little bastards. Anyway let's see what we can see. Okay, over in the corner we have a beautiful Suzuki B120, 129 pounds in 1976, a little bit more now, but this is an immaculate motorcycle. Full restoration has been undertaken and it's in a rather incredible maroon colour. Right next to it is a little Galera 98cc of pure Italian power, capable of speeds just above walking. I have no idea why I bought this motorcycle, but it runs beautifully. Now then, next to it, the wonderful, the fantastic read all about it, the fabulous Phil Me Reed replica Honda 750. I'm not sure Honda ever made a better looking bike and probably Japan's first race replica, although underneath all that beautiful bodywork, it's actually pretty standard. Okay, so over at the back now, we see our collection of CB750s. We have a soft spot, quite common in chaps of our age for the CB750s, and we have three currently in the showroom. We have one in the workshop, one on the way. These are good solid bikes and frankly if you're looking for a usable classic you really can't go far wrong. Just make sure you plan your braking well in advance. All the three in the showroom are in beautiful condition, all pretty original and all running exceptionally well. Really do like the CB750s. Now then from a very practical motorcycle to probably the most impractical motorcycle ever. It's a totally useless motorcycle. No, really it is. Unless you're five foot tall with four foot arms, the MH900E is probably best to just to be looked at. This really isn't the motorcycle, it's kinetic arm. It's form so far above function that function doesn't even get a look in. It's beautiful and incredible collectible, but don't ride it. Okay, oh, now we have some old school super biking. It should really have a hairy chest, Cuban heels and a gold medallion. If the SB6 wore aftershave, it would wear brute. It's a brute of a bike, very uncomfortable, but you won't feel, you won't feel it as you'll be too terrified. This is a great bike, but not for the faint of heart. Next to it, we have the wonderful Guzzi Le Mans Mark II. Now, Moto Guzzi's have a great following, and some of the nicest people seem to ride them. You have to be a bit different to fall for their old school charm, and here's a beautiful black and gold Cube Coburn and Hughes special. But wait, there's something even better next to it. The Guzzi Le Mans, okay, so confession times. <laughs> if the showroom was burning down, this is probably the one bike I would look to save. To my mind, it's probably one of the best looking bikes ever. We'll come back to that in a minute, I can't keep away from that. Anyway, back here we have the Honda 404, another motorcycle that I owned way back in the day and I still think they're absolutely fabulous. The red ones were, of course, a little bit faster. Now, this is absolutely true because the red paint had marginally smaller molecules which reduced drag and provided an extra two miles per hour. So red ones are indeed faster. In blue, they were slightly slower, but uh, undoubtedly more class. The blue bikes were only originally sold to members of the British aristocracy, and each actually came with a cigar, cigar lighter and grouse fenders. A fantastic motorcycle. We do like the Honda 404. Of course, the red ones are really fast. So look at that exhaust, isn't it beautiful? Ah, it's a work of art. Talking work of art, so let's go back. Let's go back to the Moda Guzzi Le Mans. Oh, okay, well, look at that. Isn't that just absolutely gorgeous? It's lovely. No, no idea why I put this bike in the show because I doubt I'll ever actually sell it. For as Woody Allen said, I'll sell my mother to the Arabs for it. A marvelous motorcycle. Now, over here we have something a bit odd. It's the Ducati 900 GTS. Now, here's a bike that was made in Italy, then shipped to South Africa. Left in the garage in South Africa for 30 years, found in the garage in South Africa, shipped to Las Vegas, and acquired in Las Vegas by MIS, and shipped to the UK, and it's now ready to roll. All original, apart from a non standard but rather cool looking fairy. Fairy? Fairy indeed, which we old farts used to call a bikini fairy. Talking of beautiful bikes, now here we have another absolute style. Moto Guzzi, Moto Guzzi? MV Augusta 750F4, a design masterpiece. Now 20 years old, it's still looking absolutely fabulous. This is the original F4 with very cool gold wheels and lovely graphics. It has a turning circle of a super tanker. It's spectacularly uncomfortable to ride, but bloody hell, it looks good now and indeed I think forevermore. Okay, 
So here's another special base. When all the world was going four cylinder and four stroke, what did the good people of Suzuki do? Create a two stroke, three cylinder water cooled monster. None of your four into one with exhaust. Let's go three into four. This is a truly immaculate motorcycle. Its emissions are probably off the frigging chart, but I'm not sure there's a better one in the UK. Okay, we're all coming towards the end now. So we have lurking in the back. You recognize that yellow thing? Yes, that is a Bimota Mantra. An incredibly ugly looking motorcycle, but uh, you'll, like, you'll be one of the very few people to actually ride one. And right at the other end of the, uh, right at the back there, we have the Triumph Bonneville, the uh, wonderful, uh, what's it called? The uh, 750 Jubilee. So there we are. That's the showroom. I know the bikes are looking a bit scruffy at the moment, but it's going to look good soon. So thank you for your time. Stay well and keep washing your bleed, man. Bye bye.